Hi, uh, my name is Zachary, and recently I participated in the 49th installment of the Ludum Dare Game Jam. It is for this event that I made a video game by myself in under 48 hours. I've participated in a few of these already, but this one is extra special because it marks the beginning of my independent game development journey. I don't know how, uh, but I'm going to try to make games full time. It's probably a bad idea, but I'm going to do it anyways. So anyways, at the start of the jam, a theme is announced. The theme this time was unstable. I did a bit of brainstorming, but uh, nothing I thought sounded fun was coming to mind. Thankfully, before the start of the jam, I did do a bit of a warm-up. I opened up Unity, and I placed a few cubes, and I made one of them move around, just so I could remember how the engine worked. This clumsy little cube fit the theme pretty well, so I think I'm just going to work with this. I have a cube, and it can move around, and it has like a jetpack thing. I'll fuss with the feel a bit, but it really doesn't get more complicated than that. The next thing that I think this cube needs is a dumb face, so I'm going to slap some facial features on it and I'm never going to touch this ever again. So very quickly, I decided the plot is going to be about someone who crashes on an alien planet or something, so the next thing I decided to do was to make a spaceship. 3D modeling is actually the only thing I have any classical education in, and this is the one time during the entire jam I'll do anything utilizing that knowledge, so that's funny. Half an hour later, I crap out a spaceship and there's some smoke coming out of it. Time to move on. I'll proceed to jam a few more things into this, things like checkpoints, screen transitions, and dialogue system. Uh, most of these things were implementing by copying and pasting code from previous projects into this, so yes, very time efficient. After establishing more of the basic features, I'll quickly make a simple level. It goes up pretty quickly seeing as how almost everything is a cube. I knew at the beginning I wanted to have three different paths to three different minigames uh, where you'd get some spaceship parts so you can fix your spaceship and win the game. And with that, uh, that's it for day one. In under six hours, I've already laid the groundwork for the rest of the game and I'm feeling pretty good about it. I will go to bed excited for the next day. Alright, uh, day two. I begin adding the first minigame area, and in order to do that, I copy and paste more cubes. I think it's going to be about herding animals or something. So I make a little man, give him a smile, and something to say. Uh, the time spent reading the dialogue is about how much time I spent writing it. Every farm man needs a little animals, so I made that next. Uh, within minutes, my little man has a whole herd of little cow dogs. Playing with them isn't too fun as they're a little lethargic so I made it so they jump randomly every once in a while. I then made them all different shapes and sizes because I thought that would be funny. With that completed, the farmer man will now give you a spaceship part for your troubles and we're on our way to the next thing. Alright, uh, for this next part, I wanted to add a more involved platforming section so naturally I just added more cubes, but this time they're rotating. At the end of this section, I needed another minigame. I brainstormed for about 60 seconds uh, before I settled on tic-tac-toe. I quickly model the tiles and throw together some time efficient code. I also implement an AI that picks at random after you make a selection. Uh, so now that I have tic-tac-toe working, I need a little guy you can talk to. Again, I just make him out of a square, slap some facial features on him, and give him something to say. I decide uh, this is good enough and I move on to the next and final minigame. I decide I'm just gonna shove it up here since left and right are already taken. I quickly model out a small path that ends in a dead end. I asked my partner what she thought should be here and she said I should make a drawing minigame, so that's what I did. Uh, within 30 minutes, I have a piece of paper and you can draw on it. I add a little box person and she asks you to make a drawing for her. Initially, I wanted it so you would have to match a drawing or something, but I had absolutely no idea how to do that. Um, so she's happy with anything as long as you make an effort. And with that, I quickly add a title and end screen and now I have a game that can be played from start to finish. Now that I at least have something somewhat complete, I decide I want to make a little opening cutscene, so I go and do that. I shove our little box person into a spaceship and I add some conflict in the form of an evil box crashing into her spaceship. And that's pretty much the opening cutscene completed. After fussing with a few more things and fixing some bugs, I think I'm going to call it for day two. With the deadline approaching in the next day, I'm happy with what I have so far and I proceed to get some rest for the final day tomorrow. Alright, day three. So with most of the gameplay and content created, I dedicated day three to mostly making the sound effects, the music, and polishing the rest of the game. I quickly open up Milky Tracker, which is a chiptune tracker used for making music. It's also pretty good for making retro sound effects because you can pretty quickly program out some little sounds. I make a bump, jump, fall, jetpack, and talk sound effect. 
I slap those into the game and now I'm on to the music. For this I'm going to use LMMS. It's an open source uh, digital audio workstation. Uh, it's good for making music. I don't really know how to use it, but it's pretty intuitive. For my instruments, I end up mostly using sounds from Earthbound, and I end up with four songs in total. A title theme, a song for the cutscene, main level theme, and some end music. And with that, my game is pretty much done. Let's see how it is. I didn't have a script prepared initially for the gameplay section of this video, but its duration is over half of the video, so uh, maybe I should say something. A good majority of the tools I use in making this video game are open source. Um, I'm pretty sure most, if not all, closed source or proprietary software eventually turns evil or at least annoying in some way. Um, you can see this pretty well with the Adobe products. So that's why I've made an effort to switch over to open source solutions for everything. The next thing I want to move over to open source is my game engine. I'm in the process of learning Adobe, which is pretty much the open source alternative to the Unity engine. It's pretty young, so I don't think it's strictly better yet, but I feel a lot more comfortable investing my time into it. Especially after seeing Unity go public and seeing news articles about them working with the military or whatever, uh, so, yeah, they're already doing weird stuff, and I don't want to stick around for it. After I switch to Godot, I think I want to switch operating systems from Windows to Linux, since Linux is the open alternative. I think my attitude about software has actually spread to pretty much everything else you could think about in life. Uh, th this is wishful thinking, but in the event that my game dev journey is successful and I can start working with other people, I would really like to structure the organization in an open and democratic fashion. Um, I don't really know what I'm talking about, but I think that's called a worker cooperative or something. I guess what I'm saying is I don't see myself being the CEO on top of an unfair, rigid hierarchy. I think the cooperative organizational style would work really well with game development because we'd all be equally invested in the success of the game, and I think that would make it better. And that's on top of just doing the right thing. Maybe you're wondering why I've decided to try to make games full-time. Until I resigned recently, I have been working for a hospital as a software engineer. I have been working there pretty much since COVID-19 started, and after two years of it, I'm just feeling incredibly burnt out. Um, what I'm doing is irresponsible, but I've been doing most things right for a long time, and I'm just not feeling so hot. Initially, I just wanted to take a break, but I found this as an opportunity to try my hand at being an indie game dev. 
Game development was what got me into programming in the first place, so I thought that returning to that and making that what I do might be what brings me joy. Alright, um, so yeah, this was a fun little journey. If you'd like to play this game, there's a link in the description. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out, and I'm looking forward to what's to come. I think my next plan is starting in November, I will be making a game a month with a devlog video for each. Now there's a big difference between a 48 hour game and a 720 hour game, but I'm looking forward to the challenge. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I thank you for watching. Until next time.